This week on the Creative Genius Podcast, Gail Doby welcomes Julia Kirkendall, who has operated her interior design firm for over 30 years. In this episode, you'll hear all about the challenges Julia has faced and the lessons she's learned. And most importantly, you'll learn about one of the reasons she has been so successful, seizing opportunities when they arise. Well, welcome, Julia. I'm so glad to have you on the podcast. And I'd love for us to just start and talk a little bit about how you got into interior design. Sure. Um, you know, it's been a long road. So that's been over 32, probably closer to 40 years. Uh, yeah. But I've had Kirkendall design for 32 years. So of course, I was doing it part time way before then. And I realized I was in a whole nother career path and realized that design and creating home had, was a natural gift for me. And that after coaching and helping a lot of friends along the way, um, it just became something that I picked up and was doing and loved it. And so what started out to be just kind of a fun hobby ended up being a career path. Well, I think you're probably not alone with that. A lot of people do that. And right. I <laughs> good for you. At least you have built a very successful business over the years as a result of that. Yeah. Yeah. It has been it has been really a lot of fun. And you know, we are constantly pivoting and doing new things and that's what's kept it fun and engaging. Oh, well, that's great. I can't wait to dive into that with you today. So yeah. Let's go back a little bit, and I can't remember exactly what year we met, but I do remember meeting you at High Point Market, where I meet a lot of people, and um, and I remember our conversation. I'll never forget it. You came up to me at the end of it and asked me some very pointed questions, which were great. So why don't you decide why you decided to work with us, or why don't you share well, that? that? That was quite a few years ago, yeah. but yes. Um, you know, Gail, you are probably one of the very first out there in coaching designers, and it was such an intriguing um, opportunity. So it took me quite a while to really uh, investigate, if you would, and kind of get to know you before bringing my business and trusting somebody to take my business from the level that I had gotten it to a new level. But I knew that I needed that help. I just didn't uh, know where and how. And listening to you and your qualifications and your experience really helped me feel comfortable. And like, like you said, it was several questions. I didn't dive into it very quickly. It took me a little time, which I think is how I approach about everything. And then, um, you know, we got started in a coaching um coaching situation for quite a few years and mm -hmm. you absolutely helped me grow uh, Kirkendall design to a whole new level. Mm, well, that's so fun. And it was, it's been fun working with you. I just remember you calling me the principal more than once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I like to have somebody um, who would have the wisdom and knowledge and direction that you could give because I, re I respond really well to that as I think, you uh, made many mentions of you'd give me an assignment and I'd turn around and I'd get it down because I was so eager to learn, but also I respected um, what you had to say and your direction. And it made total sense to, uh, you know, explore and do do the work to be able to get the results. Well, I remember I gave you at one time when we were talking, I gave you some things to work on. And I, my, I specifically remember telling you, You've got about six months to get this done. And when we had our yeah. next conversation, you had it all done. It was a month later. <laughs> yeah, you were so funny. And I just well, thought to myself, yeah. well, that's Julia. She, she's going to take the bull by the horns and she's going to go take action and get it done. That's kind of how this whole thing started. You know, I started at Kirkendall Design with $200. Wow. And just some idea of what I could do with that. And quite honestly, I never looked back or even looked to calculate or count how much money I had at that point. I just knew I was not, uh, there was another level. And when I met you, which was several years into my business, and like I said, 
at that point in our industry, there were not very many people out there who knew how to or had the skill set to coach uh, coach interior designers. And um, it was a great, great find and connection. And yeah, it really helped. Well, thank you. Well, and you did the hard work, though. So let's talk about some of the hard work you've had to do. What are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced over the years? So for a long time, it was just understanding my value because it was such a natural gift. And I think that runs true even today. I still have to remember that what I do has, you know, intellectual value or it um, transfers to monetary value. And I think understanding my value and making sure that I took care of that and treated that respectfully for myself before I could somebody else. And therefore, that also meant changing my mindset about money Mm -hmm. um, and thinking that I could do something less expensive and better when what my client was asking for was just they wanted they weren't looking necessarily for less expensive. They were just looking for me to to do a really great design job. So I had to change my mindset. And that was a big deal. That happened many, many years ago. Um, and then I had to, of course, like a lot of us, we I had to stop trying to fix every problem that I came into. Um, and as we know that being an interior designer, it has its um, its collation. There's a lot of similarities to being a counselor. And you're right in somebody's home. You get intimately involved with them, their family, and you start doing things outside of the scope of not only your work, but only even your profession. So you just have to back out and realize that you're there to do a service and do it really great and provide that service and not try to fix everybody's problems. Mm, Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. And I think the challenges too with that, I just know that you had some periods of time where it was challenging with uh, some of the clients you were getting. I think everybody goes through that where they have that difficulty and then also just really achieving the profit margins that you needed and, and wanted to have. Yeah. So just moving your business to a point where you had the confidence that you could ask for some of those higher numbers, um, that took a bit, didn't it? It did, but we're talking 15 years ago. So for <laughs> me, does it reflect back that long? Um, it is interesting when I look back on my you know, business Uh, statistics, because, you know, I love to gather data and I keep quite a bit of data that 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 has been close to 15 years. So David, think back then. Now I'm disappointed I wasted the first 15, but um, the last 15 have been really good and the next 15 are going to be better. Oh, that's great. Well, I remember, too, that when we first started working together, you had a retail store. And I'd love for you to share yeah. about that experience. A lot of people have that dream to start a retail store. Yeah, well, there again, that was quite a few years ago. Probably uh, looking back now, that was about 25 years ago. Uh, because when we first started, I had already had a retail store for about 10 years. Mm. And it took us a few years to realize, it wasn't long for you to realize that it wasn't a profit my profit margins were long, were, were really short, but it took me a longer time to then transfer that business to design and close that retail business and then spend all my energy into design. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the retail market 20, 25 years ago was a lot different than it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, no, I don't have a retail store. Um, but it was at that point a way that I started my design business definitely is not that way to start a design business in in 2024. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you. I think yeah. it's gotten even harder. And I, as I have one client left, I think that still has a retail. Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> Another one just started one, but that's a passion project for her. So, you know, everyone has a desire um, for some part of their business to be a real passion project like that. And I think everybody's mm-hmm. got to try it and get it out of their system. So agreed. Yeah, I I believe that it was a pathway to Mm -hmm. design for me. But um, like, like I said, it was not profitable. And since and at this point, probably not the way I would 
ever advise anybody to go. Uh, retail, I think retailers have to be retailers. They, in order to make that a profitable business, business, that model is totally different than a design business. It totally is, for sure. Well, let's talk about your newest venture, the studio at yeah. KP Offerings. And I'm really excited to hear about it. What inspired you to start it? Well, the studio at KD just kind of birthed itself like many things do. I think when you when you allow yourself to look outside of the box that you are working within and look beyond, you start expanding the opportunities. And we knew that we needed to change our location based on some of it was demographics, getting in more of a central location, but also bit, also just growth. And so we had we had that on in our mind. We knew we were looking for a space. And during that time, you know, we we be myself mainly, I uh, was continually traveling around the country, and I came across a piece of property called or uh, an inn called Julep Farms, and it's in uh, it's in Dalton, Georgia, I believe. And Julep Farms was just very inspiring. It wasn't that, oh, that's what I want to do because their design, they didn't have really much of a design aspect. But what it showed me was some different avenues that I could take design and grow my business in some different different revenue streams and breathe a little life in it for myself so that as a seasoned designer and a business owner, I was doing something new and exciting and therefore regenerating my business. And so the studio at Kirkendall Design really, really came to fruition when we came across the piece of property in Tulsa that was larger than what we needed, that had all kinds of potential. And we decided, I had to decide in an hour to purchase it. Wow. Um, and that's one of those times when it you had to I already had the thoughts. We already had the dreams. We already had the vision of what we wanted to do. We had no idea that would be where we would do it. But I think that it, when you as a business owner and a visionary take the time to dream and look at the what ifs and the potential, then I believe that. As you are as you are going about your day to day business, which is what happened on that on that day, things will come across your your path that that align with that, and you just jump in and go for it. And that's what we did. So it turned into what did I buy? Because I bought what was a old nursery, um, a building that was beautiful building, wasn't all that old, but needed totally to be turned into design studio offices, and then start dreaming about all the potential that came with it because there was five acres of agriculture land, zoned land in the middle of Tulsa. So I had no really idea what I would do with that. And since then, we have um, we have developed the, the studio at KD. But probably one of the most important things to talk about that is that it only supports, its function is to support our design firm. So anything that we do at and in the studio at KD has got to support Kirkendall Design. <clears throat> and that is another great lesson, Gail, that you taught me uh, in our coaching sessions was to use a tool called the impact filter. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I use the impact filter all the time. Mm. So that I, anytime that I, as a visionary would have an idea or get a thought of this would be a lot of fun instead of chasing or those thoughts or overwhelming my staff, I do take that time and fill out that impact filter and look at how that would affect the main business, which is Kirkendall Design. Mm. So as we've processed through owning the studio at Kirkendall Design, the different revenue streams we built have all helped. They all relate back to developing the business of Kirkendall Design. Mm. Okay. We'll talk about some of the things that you're doing now. What are your revenue streams that you're 
Um, so some of the different things we have that we offer is we have a large building. We built a design loft on a second floor and our whole lower lower uh, level of the building is being used during the week and on the weekends um, in different ways. One of the ways that we use it is for photographers to be able to come in during any time and use our studio for photographer st- sessions for uh, branding for corporate for business um, we've been very successful with that and that is just one revenue stream where they come in and they rent out our studio for their photography sessions mm-hmm. so that's been fun another one has been for lifestyle uh, workshops we call them and that's where we have professionals that are around our area and region that come in and teach different, workshops such as how to make a wreath for your front door or how to, you know, all the different, uh, we had a really successful uh, sourdough making class. And then we have had a really great class on tablescapes and all of those things relate right back to the home. Mm -hmm. Um, We offer for our clients and associates um, the opportunity to use our space for signature events such as like retirement parties or bridal showers, but it is limited to our, our, our client list as well as our affiliates. So that makes it a little bit more of a privilege to be a client of Kirkendall design. There are a lot of pluses that come with that. Mm. Um, We have planted a beautiful flower garden which our clients reap the benefits of that all the time. We are bringing fresh flowers with us all the time for their home and just kind of another touch that we get to offer to our clients. Along with that, then the other four acres that we have, we have a flower farmer who uh, grows flowers on that area and she sells them in the uh, different uh, farmers markets around our area. So we have been able to lease out the land that we're not using right now and get an income from that and allow somebody else to build a business, Mm -hmm. which has made it a real beautiful, active area. So it's kind of fun to see that develop for now. So as you hear, there's there's several areas that we have developed Kirkendall Design uh, through the studio at KD. Every time somebody walks into our studio, They're surrounded in an environment that reflects our brand, tells the story of who we are, and it welcomes them in and gives them an opportunity to get to know us before they even begin to pick up the phone or get on the website and um, have a discovery call or an initial consult with us. Mm, That is so great. Well, I can't wait to see uh, some new photos of that. I'm sure by now all the flowers are even more beautiful than when you first started building. Um, They are. So you also have years of experience in construction and your husband was in that business. So how important has that design build part of the business been for you? You know, it is a huge, huge part of Kirkendall design as for, because as a design firm, we can do a full service turnaround. We can offer complete complete services for any of our projects. However, I would have to say the pro is we can control the schedule and solve the challenges in-house, but the con is there's not near as big of a profit margin in construction as there is in design. So you have to have a significant volume of business to make it worth it. So the, you know, there's a benefit that we, that we have, that we take certain level jobs, we take certain jobs that we know that we will serve well, but that is not the area that we really, um, really make our most profits. It too is an area that really reflects back to Kirkendall Design and helps build Kirkendall Design. Mm, That's fabulous. I think you've done a great job of diversifying your business with some very unusual things and maybe not the common 
grouping of things that most people have done before. How has that helped you through the challenging economic times? And we've had them several we years have them. Oh, yeah. running, yeah? Yeah, I think that that's important for any business is to diversify. And I do believe that designers um, are finding new and unique ways to do so. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we shouldn't jump on the same bandwagon of, as what you're seeing happen. I believe we're creatives and visionaries. So give yourself the opportunity to look and see what's important to you and your clients and explore those things and open those doors so that you're able to find areas that serve your business best and go have fun with it. It will keep you engaged. It will keep your clients engaged. My staff is loving our new space. They love all the energy that people coming in are bringing. They love the opportunity to go out and sit out in the flower field or out in the garden and work for a while or meet with a client. So I think you just have to be bold. You have to look for those opportunities and jump in. Well, you are certainly bold and courageous, and that is always something that I think about with you. So good for you. Thank you. Well, what is your bigger vision now? Do you is there something beyond this? Have you do you mm. have some ideas for colliding? Well, yeah, of course. There again, <laughs> I better get out the impact filter so I can see sure. if they're really gonna be viable, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I do. There's there's a lot of opportunity ahead. Every you know, the big question is, okay, well, what's your end game? What are what are you what are where do you think you're going? And how long will you be doing this? And the answer is just so so varied, is I don't ever see myself retired in the conventional way of retirement. Mm -hmm. I having my whole life, including my family and how we um, are a family together all are kind of embedded in this business. So um, I had to step back and get an idea of, you know, in purchasing a building, gaining assets and looking at everything that I had, what was going to happen with this building if I wasn't around. Mm -hmm. And we developed an employee, an ESOP, an employee owned program. So we are in the process because I have great employee retention mm -hmm. that our employees are going to own Kirkendall Design and be able to take it on and beyond. Mm -hmm. So that's an excitement for me to know that there is, you know, a future. Mm -hmm. And then what we do along the way, there are just so many opportunities, Gail, that are presented. Now, I think a lot of that has to do with um, having a very good established business, which is our main business being design, getting the opportunity to now branch out and find other things that we are enjoying to do, but with the understanding that they all have to help develop business for Kirkendall Design. I think that's where, that's the magic in it. It mm -hmm. all has to feed the mothership, as I call it all the time, so. That's very, very bright. And you know, honestly, the same thing with the design build, because that does feed yeah. the design part of the business, which is yeah. kind of, we, we didn't do design build in my firm. We did a construction design department, but that fed our residential design business. So it was a natural right. partnership. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. for, for sure. So we have got some great, exciting things to explore. But I think the important lesson, of course, is always feeding that design business, but looking at all the different opportunities you have to do that. And for every personality, for every uh, designer out there, it's going to be a little different. And don't be afraid to explore it because it could be the biggest thing that that takes your business to the next level. Mm -hmm. I love that. Knowing what you know now, what would you suggest to designers that aren't as far along on their journey as you are? Just that. Be bold. Look for opportunities. Um, don't be afraid to walk through those doorways, but always take the time to make sure your energy is only going to be building your business and not just a hobby, not just for fun. Mm. For sure is make sure it all it all can trans be transferable to your design business. Mm -hmm. And you can make a great living as a designer. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, it, you can make more money as a designer than in a lot of professions. So to me, well, that's, that, that's true. Yes. 
that's yeah. a big part of it is design. The profit margins in design are very healthy. Um, so that is what you want to, you know, you're, you're doing this to make money. So that's where your profit margins are healthy there. So make your money in design. Enjoy the journey. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So my final question is, what are three takeaways you'd like to share with our listener? And I think you said one, which is be bold mm. and courageous. So that's number one. How about yeah. the other two? Um, I would tell you that which is bold and courageous growth and change are good things. Mm -hmm. These are things that people tie, sometimes get concerned about and they don't do it because they're of fear. And I think you've got to look at growth and change as being good things. Mm -hmm. I think that you have to really work hard at building the team that supports your dreams. And the big one of our big things that we're really emphasizing and have been for a couple of years now is I have a team that is supporting my dreams, but in turn, I support their dreams. Mm -hmm. And that keeps them engaged. They understand that it is important to me that they're happy and that they're they're working and we're all working, but we're all starting to to see our dreams, our own individual dreams come true. And when you do that, it builds an enthusiasm that is contagious. So our big motto these days is keep dreaming, keep looking, keep looking for what what that next step could be. And I think I think when you do that, opportunities and growth come right with it. Mm, that is a perfect end to the podcast. Yeah. And thank you much for uh, so much for the sure. inspiration and the information that you shared with everybody. I hope everybody is inspired to go out and be bold and courageous, just like you have been. Sure. Thank you. I'm glad I got an opportunity to share with you. And of course, you know that you, um, your team has been very integral part of growing Kirkendall Design, and we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you for all that wisdom and advice. Thank you so much, Julia. Love you and sure. wish you all the best for the future. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Julia, for joining Gail on the podcast. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Hopefully you're feeling inspired to say yes and take advantage of smart opportunities. If you're interested in learning more about Pearl Collective and our resources, visit thepearlcollective.com. Find your next business opportunity with our coaching programs and take your creative business to the next level.